Hey everybody, thank you for being with me this week. As you can tell, I'm not in uniform. Um, today is a city holiday in observance of Veterans Day. So thank you again for being with me. Uh, this week what we're going to do is we're going to look at sprinkler underground inspections and testing. Um, my experience with this is that a lot of authorities having jurisdiction struggle with understanding who is responsible for looking at the sprinkler underground and for being a, a witness to the testing. My experience is that if we're not a part of that, then usually nobody is. So uh, what I wanted to do is kind of do a brief basic overview of what we need to look for and then also the testing that we need to be a part of. So I hope you enjoy this week and please pose your questions if you have them at the end. Thank you so much. Are you active when it comes to witnessing underground sprinkler pipe testing and conducting visual inspections? I know that NFPA 13 and NFPA 24 talk specifically about the inspections and testing. Uh, the problem is, is that um, most times it's, it's, it's uncertain who's actually going to be performing the, uh, the testing and inspections with the contractor. So this is where we fit in. The first part of this presentation, we're going to talk about the visual inspections. To get started, we want to make sure that we reference the plans to ensure that the piping and materials installed coincide with the engineered plans. If they're calling for ductile iron pipe, we want to make sure that ductile iron pipe is what's there uh, and, and that they didn't go with some type of alternative like C900 CPVC. So we want to make sure that what we inspect is what the designer called out. Next, we want to look at the depth of bury. Typically, you want it buried below the frost line. In our area, frost line really doesn't come into, into place, so in these locations, the depth of cover shall be not less than two and a half feet to prevent mechanical damage. Under driveways, it needs to be uh, no, no less than three foot, and the depth of cover shall be measured from the top of the pipe to finish grade. Now let's take a look at thrust blocking and joint restraint. Know that thrust blocking will be our responsibility to look to make sure that that it has been installed. However, if joint restraint is used, thrust blocking is not needed. Thrust blocking and joint restraint are used to prevent pipe from shifting. Know that thrust blocking is only acceptable if the soil is suitable for thrust blocking to be used. Now that we've looked at visual inspections of the underground piping, let's take a look at the testing that's required for that underground piping. A large diameter flush of the underground piping shall be witnessed by the inspector. Um, one good thing to do here, which is not installed in this one, is to make sure that you put burlap sacks on the back end of that outlet. Uh, that way uh, you can see what type of particulate is actually being removed from the underground piping. The purpose of this is to prevent any type of mechanical damage to the sprinkler system once connected. The next step is the hydrostatic testing of the underground piping. I typically do this from the backflow preventer that's at the property line to the floor flange. And what we do is we, we actually hydrostatically test this at 200 PSI for two hours or 50 PSI in excess of system working pressure, whichever is greater. Um, and what we do is we're looking at to make sure that they maintain within 5 PSI uh, loss or gain. I require a chart recorder be provided and that the hydrostatic test be charted. As you can see to the left, this is an example of a test that I did recently for two hours. You can see that we had a 20 PSI drop in two, in two hours, so the test failed you know, because it wasn't within the 5 PSI allowance. So that chart recorder for me is so important to make sure that I can adequ adequately see the dropper gain. Lastly, the backflow preventer shall be forward flow tested, and this is an area that is usually overlooked. Test outlets shall be provided if you do not have outlets such as standpipes and others that can, can be, be used. The minimum flow rate required shall be the system demand, including host stream demand, where applicable. Once all inspections and testing have been completed, underground test certificate, which is the contractor's material and test certificate for underground piping, that's found in NFPA 24 and NFPA 13 shall be filled out by the contractor and submitted to the authority having jurisdiction. Note that 
all testing that is performed here shall only be witnessed by the AHJ, not performed. Thank you for being with me, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.